Good morning. Welcome to Zechariah chapter 12, verses 7 to 9 today. The Lord will save the tents of Judah first, so that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall not become greater than that of Judah. In that day the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. God has plans for his people. More than that, he'll take them to heights of deliverance that they've never known. And here we have God saying through his servant Zechariah that, that even the least, the least among God's people will be heroic like David. I mean, this is a call for all of us to come up higher, isn't it? There's a sense of divine understatement here, isn't there? God will seek to destroy them, as though God couldn't destroy them faster than instantly, if, if that was his purpose. There are times of chastisement and punishment, and there are times of deliverance and power. And we're kind of more used to the first kind than the second kind, aren't we? But all things have their beginning and their resolution, and it's the same with the controversy between good and evil. God will finish what, what's been started. God didn't necessarily start it. He's going to finish this thing after a period of, uh, I guess we could say, universal education. The universe has been watching. The, uh, whatever created beings there are out there looking on have watched watch closely what's happening here on earth and I've definitely picked up a few pointers about the way things shouldn't be. So God is going to bring it to a resolution. Every, every intelligent being, created being, is going to see how does it work out when you serve and do good? How does it work out when you simply serve self? It'll all become extremely uh, razor sharp clear. And so that's what's happening right now. The conflict between good and evil is on. And we sort of were born into this conflict. But consider this. When the lessons are learned, there's no reason to allow uh, the things to continue on indefinitely. There's no reason for there to be uh, poison ever anymore. There's no reason to have murder and, and, and uh, these kinds of things happening, uh, continuing to happen across the universe. God is of purer eyes than to look upon sin. And so this is a temporary thing that we're, we're living in right now. It's a temporary, uh, a temporary pothole in the universe. And, uh, but we're learning a lot from it, and we're learning a lot by direct experience, some of us, uh, rather sadly. But that's okay. God's going to bring, the Bible tells us what, good out of evil. And so we can be sure that he's going to more than restore whatever we lose along the way. And we'll have better things as time goes on. So when every person has chosen sides, when everything's resolved, there's nothing to be done there except to uh, put the finish on it and we move on into a better time. At the end, we have kind of a ratification of all the choices made, including choices you and I are making day by day. Where will we put our heart? Where will we put our mind? God will be our helper in the end, but he encourages us to engage in the battle. He's got a lot of things going on, and he's calling us to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. We're kind of used to this kind of limp along thing, like we just kind of expect God's going to finish it, and we'll just kind of ride the bus. But it says here, the least of his people will be like David. Well, David, if, if you read First and Second Samuel, and, and the, you'll find that David was a pretty active guy. I mean, he was busy doing warrior stuff all the time. And God's plan for us is that we would be the, like the least, the least among us would be, you know, heroic in God's strength like David. So I believe when I look at that, that God has, God has a higher line. He's calling us up to a higher ground. He's calling us up to to more intensity, more involvement in the gospel. It used to be a day when, you know, many people had heard all these things, but, but today, a lot of the grandparents don't know the gospel, and so a lot of the kids today have never heard it. You and I, we have opportunity, uh, with all the grace that God will give us, with all the help that he'll give us, to be warriors like David, and to be, however, giving the, the good news of the gospel into this world, the good news of of God's present truth Bible message for these times that people so urgently need so that they can make the right decision instead of aligning with what, what comes naturally, which really means what comes unnaturally to us, self-service, which comes naturally to us, but it shouldn't come naturally. Instead of aligning with that, we want to let God transform us so that we are more like Jesus and all the servants of Jesus we read about in the scripture. We've got to come up to the line. May God bless you and I today as we as we follow Jesus more closely. Mm -hmm.